It comes as government ministers defend plan changes to incapacity benefit. They've released figures which show more than 878,000 people dropped their claims rather than facing a tough new medical test. In all, one and a half million of those assessments have been carried out, and in 55% of cases, the person was deemed fit to work immediately. 24% were capable of doing some work, and just 232,000 people were too ill to do anything. Well, joining us live from Worthing is Sue Marsh, who suffers from a rare form of Crohn's disease. She's campaigning against the government's planned welfare changes on her Diary of a Benefit Scrounger blog. First of all, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon on Easter Sunday. If you don't mind me asking, which benefits are you currently receiving? I've got very severe Crohn's disease and I get disability living allowance and I've been transferred myself from the old incapacity benefit to the new employment support allowance. And presumably you are exactly the sort of person that the state wants to continue to support and are introducing these changes so that the correct people are receiving the correct uh, allowances. If only that were the case. Um, I was lucky. Um, I, I campaign in this area, so I guess, you know, I, I ought to know how to fill the form in. Lots of people don't know. They think um, that they have a serious condition, perhaps cancer. They write on the form, I've got cancer. They send the form in, they don't get the benefit. So I'm afraid it's an absolute lottery. It isn't just a case of saying, oh, the government wants to support people like you. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people like me actually don't get the benefit when they do transfer across. So is your main concern with the administration, with the way that people are being sort of asked to apply for benefits, or is it actually as, as an overview of the reforms that you have a problem with? Um, I think most people support the idea of reform. Most people support the idea of an assessment. They want that assessment to be fair. Um, they don't want to turn up and be, go through a tick box system. Um, they don't want to be treated as though they've got something to prove, as though they're somehow guilty until they can prove they're innocent. Um, it is very much the way we do these, these, these changes. Um, and today's a perfect example. The government come out on an Easter Sunday. They say that 900,000 people chose to drop their claims. That's absolutely not the case at all. In all of these things, you mustn't look at it like a static lump of people. People come on, people come off the benefit. Um, and in fact, what happens, you know, as with any group of people, sadly, people die. Other people find work, they can fit around their disability. Um, other people stop their claim um, for, for numerous reasons. Some people have found after one year on the new employment support allowance, the government are simply saying you're not entitled to the benefit anyway, whether you've got better or found work. There's many many reasons why people drop their claims, there's many reasons, and in fact the government did this before. They did it with the employment support allowance and it turned out that 94% of people had actually found work or got better. People are honest. On the whole, people um, will come back and say, actually, you know, there's a three month qualifying period, I didn't realise, I've got better, I don't need the benefit, thank you. That's what the government's own figures showed. But so you're saying people are honest, but the government figures say that one and a half million people who had these medical assessments taking place on them, 55% of them were actually capable of going straight back to work immediately. Oh, we should be very worried about that then, shouldn't we? Um, because these are people who had gone through assessments before. It's a falsehood to say that there was no assessment. There was the PCA, the Personal Capability Assessment. These are people whose consultants have said they're not fit for work. These are people with often very, very serious conditions. If 55% are being found fit for work, and actually I was quite surprised about that figure today. Um, on new claims, on IB transfers, I actually thought the figure was lower, so I'm rather surprised. need to see where that figure's come from. Um, I think we should be worried about that. I don't think it should be trumpeted as good news. Clearly, perhaps some people with the right support can work. That would be fantastic. The, the support isn't there. The government actually aren't supporting people into work. Um, you might get a bit of help putting together a CV. Many of us have very complex needs, and if that was all we needed, we'd be working already. Okay, Sue, listen, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon.